Welcome back to NB Media and Content. Today, I'll be featuring the 2023 Isuzu D-Max, one of Australia's top selling vehicles. This is a car you should consider if you're looking at things like the Ford Ranger, Mazda BT50, the Toyota Hilux, plenty of options to choose from. And the D-Max has a price range from just over 42,000 Australian dollars going all the way up to $73,000 for this top specification X-Terrain model. And in this video, I'll be telling you everything you need to know about it. I'm gonna run you through the model grades, talk to you about the exterior design, interior features, and then I'm going to drive it. Let's start this video talking about a brief overview about the D-Max. It is based on the Mazda BT-50, which you can see my full video review on the top hand corner there. And in terms of model grades, there are four variants to choose from. SX, LSM, LSU, and the top specification X-Terrain, which is the one I'm featuring in the video. And lastly, I would like to thank Harrigan Motor Group Isuzu Ute for allowing me to film their X-Terrain demonstrator. They are located in Mossvale in the Southern Highlands and I have listed their details in the description below. But for now, let's continue on with the tour. Moving on to the styling, the D-Max does have a rugged appearance. I really like the way it looks. Some of the key features include bi-LED headlights with the auto leveling function, as well as LED daytime running lights. And exclusive to the X-Terrain grade, it features a dark gray radiator grille, gray sides, steps, flared wheel arches, 22 inch matte dark grey alloy wheels, dark grey roof racks, as well as an aero sports bar on top of the tray. And moving towards the rear design of the D-Max, it features LED lights along here, plastic side steps, and overall for the exterior design, there are eight colours to choose from. Seven of them are an additional $500 cost option, and white is free of charge. Okay, first impressions inside the cabin of the D-Max. So, as you can see, it has a fairly simple layout, pretty similar to the Mazda BT-50. And compared to some of the other Ute competitors on the market, the D-Max feels very premium. Now, some of the key features you get with this X-Terrain model grade, it features dual zone climate control, heated front seats for the front row, these leather accented seats with the red stitching that are very, very comfortable. And you also get this leather padding on the doors as well. In terms of getting comfortable, the steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment. The seats can be controlled electronically with the additional lumbar support. And moving on to infotainment, it all runs off this nine inch touchscreen display, which is what you'd find in the Mazda BT-50. So as you can see, swiping through the home menu, you can configure it on what you want to see. Moving around from my finger, it is very responsive. You've got some physical shortcut buttons down the bottom here for your volume and home. And in terms of the features, FM, AM and digital radio with full Bluetooth music and telephone streaming, smartphone mirroring, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, inbuilt satellite navigations, as well as an eight speaker sound system with live surround sound. If I just put the car into reverse, as you can see, it features a reversing camera with parking guides and front and rear parking sensors. The safety technology is also generous. It comes with autonomous emergency braking, semi-autonomous steering, radar cruise control with cyclist and pedestrian protection, driver attention assist, rear cross traffic alerts, and traffic sign recognition. Up the top here, it features an analog gauge cluster with a 4.2 inch digital display. And you can cycle through the different menus, looking at trip computers, four wheel drive information, entertainment, and safety systems. So although pretty configurable, in terms of four-wheel drive settings, you can control it with this dial here, switching it to two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and four-wheel drive low range. These two buttons activate the hill descent control and lock the rear differential. And lastly, moving on to practicality. So in the center, two large bottle holders and in the center console, storage that goes down pretty deep. A spot there for a mobile phone, as well as a 12 volt socket and a USB-A charging port. On the passenger side, two large size glove boxes, as well as a little storage area on top of the dashboard. And on the two doors, large bottle holders with some additional storage pockets. You also get these two cup holders on either side of the dashboards and on the top here, sunglasses holder. Okay, moving on to the back seats. As you can see, I've got plenty of knee room, toe room, and headroom, and this driver's seat is set in my position. And if I have a look around, I can see these large grab handles, which will make it easy for people to climb into the back, as well as some additional creature comforts like air conditioning vents, a USB-A charging port, an iPhone holder, 
as well as a fold down armrest with two small cup holders, this coat hook here, as well as two mat pockets, and on the doors, large storage bins with large bottle holders. And lastly, for storage, you can actually lift up the base of the seat, revealing an almost flat floor with some additional storage trays to keep valuables hidden. And you can also fold down this rear seat if you require a flat loading floor. And lastly, for baby seats, it has two ISO fix points on these two outboard seats, and behind me, two top tether points. Okay, moving on to the tray. As you can see, the X-Train features a roller cover, which you can lock and unlock, which is pretty nice, so that keeps items secure. If we have a look inside, we can see the tailgate is actually damped. That makes it easy to open and close. And to open the roller cover, push that down and it slides back just like that. And from what I can see, pretty decent load space, as well as some tie down hooks and some drains to let water out. And when you're done, to close this, you just pull on this strap, close this, and off you go. Okay, before we take it out for a drive, let's talk about the specifications. The engine we're looking at is a 3-litre inline four-cylinder turbo diesel, mated to a six-speed automatic, producing 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters of torque. Okay, first time behind the wheel in the D-Max. What is there to say? Well, like I mentioned before, it shares the same platform as the Mazda BT50. And that means it sits on the ladder frame chassis, like many of its other U competitors. But what I think makes the D-Max unique is its comfort level. Inside the D-Max, everything feels very premium, right down to the soft leather and the cushiony seats that really hug you in. You can really enjoy the driving experience if you were going to use this every day. And you also sit nice and high, giving you that nice commanding driving position. The radar cruise control works really well, it doesn't disengage when you go down hills. And, and in terms of fuel economy, I've averaged 9 litres per 100, and the manufacturer's claim is 8 litres per 100, so I think that's pretty good for a dual cab ute. And considering this is a top specification X-Terrain, it's price, not that much more than the mid-spec SR5 Hilux. So in terms of value for money, this is a lot better than the Toyota. So what's my final verdict on the Isuzu D-Max? It's really nice to drive, very refined. It offers some good technology features and it's very comfortable to drive and very refined for a dual cab ute. So that's my video on the Isuzu D-Max. I would love it if you could subscribe and follow my channel, like this video, and I will see you in the next video.